Charles from NeedCoffee.com. And uh, of course, here is uh, Jonathan Mamory. Hi, guys. And uh, so I, I think we're going to talk a little bit um, uh, about the book and the books. And then uh, I, I think if we're, we're lucky, um, Jonathan might grace us with a bit from the uh, upcoming book, the sequel to Patient Zero. Yes. And, uh, and then we'll take some questions. Um, so, uh, Jonathan, I guess the first question, because I've read the book, and uh, I, I think the, um, uh, about page 90, I realized that my productivity for the weekend was shot, <laughs> and I was going to have to just kind of work through and finish it. Uh, so, so thank you for that. Mix, thank you. Um, I guess the first question I, after, after reading like Zombie CSU and stuff is, um, if you look at World War Z as kind of the, um, shall we say, the, the red storm rising of zombie books, uh, what compelled you to write the Rainbow Six of zombie books? <laughs> um, it's funny, I, I started working on um, Zombie CSU before I read World War Z. Mm. Um, I was, I've been a zombie nut uh, for a long, long, long time, so I've always wanted to write a zombie novel. Um, I, I, I want to give a little bit of backstory to, to, to how I got into the whole zombie thing. Um, when I was a kid, my grandmother was always telling me about what she called the larger world, supernatural things. And I was fascinated by it from the time I could, I could walk, or maybe even younger. Um, and so, every, you know, when, that, when the, the local movie theater started showing two movies every Saturday afternoon, two horror movies every Saturday afternoon, I was there. Now we're talking, I was like eight, nine, ten years old, sneaking into the movies or, or paying, for those of you who are my age, you understand, 35 cents got me into the movie back in 1968. For those who are younger than that, you're going to go, really? <laughs> um, but yeah, 35 cents got me in for two movies, five cartoons, and a whole bunch of trailers, and I was, I was set. And it was one of those gigantic, big um, Art Deco movie houses in Philadelphia that could have, originally was supposed to see 2,400 people, and everything was roped off except for one little section. So naturally, I snuck into the balcony, which had been closed since, you know, I think uh, Washington was president. Um, so I'm up there alone. When Night of the Living Dead, you know, first showed in Philadelphia, October second, nineteen sixty-eight, and now I was a really smart-ass kid. You know, I, I was doing martial arts since I was in diapers, just about. So I'd already figured out how to fight vampires, and I figured out how to fight werewolves, and figured. Out, and the mummy was never a problem. <laughs> a slow, shuffling guy in very dry bandages. I mean, we played with matches as a hobby. <laughs> um, and. For Godzilla, you know, uh, he, he stops Philadelphia. Everyone's running this way. He's running this way. I go that way. You know, that, the right angle fleeing thing always made sense to me. But then George Romero threw, threw zombies at us, you know, ghouls at the time. And it was something that completely broke the mold. You had these creatures. First off, they were everywhere. Anyone could turn into one with just the slightest little help from a little bite. Uh, and if, even if, in the original film, even if somebody died, you know, just fell down and died from a heart attack, they're going to rise as a zombie. Everybody turned into a zombie. As a rule changer, you can't get much more dramatic. And I'm sitting there in the movie theater going, oh, crap. Because, you know, I, I saw Ben. I love Ben, you know, the hero of Night of the Living Dead. And he's, he's, he's beating up these zombies, and everybody's running through them. And I'm thinking, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, you know, I'm only 10, but I'm fast, you know, especially when I'm scared, because I'm really fast when I'm scared. Um, but then there was more and more and more, and you never knew if fleeing meant running toward, you know. So by the time I got out of there, I knew I wanted to do something with zombies, and I loved zombies my whole life. I didn't get a chance to write anything about zombies until um, my editor uh, at, at Citadel Press called me up and said, can you give me a zombie book? Because I was already doing folklore books, uh, supernatural folklore books for Citadel. And I said, sure, what kind? She said, I don't know, it came me with some ideas, and I hit her with the idea of zombie CSU. Because um, I'd spent all these years talking, you know, thinking about how the real world would react. I, I liked the practical approach, um, and I also didn't like the fact that we, we, we lost so quickly in all the movies. You know, the, everything crumbled. So I, 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 I researched Zombie CSU, uh, and I was talking to SWAT team guys and Homeland Security and cops and doctors and forensics experts, and I'm gathering all this information about how the real world would deal with zombies. And I'm thinking, man, this would make a hell of a novel. This would make a hell of a novel. Why am I not writing the novel? I'm going to write the novel. And I took the stuff from there. I, I sat down at a diner and did one, something I'd never done before. I started writing by hand. I didn't know I was actually capable of doing that. I'm a, I'm a computer geek. So 
I actually found it. Hey, the hand works, you know, and I'm writing and I'm loving this story. And I'm like, I'm writing a zombie novel. I'm writing a techno thriller zombie novel. Yeah, there's a market for that. Because um, you know all the other techno thriller zombie novels that are out there. <laughs> and I pitched it to my agent, and she loved it. And she started shopping it around, and bam, we sold it. So I got into writing zombie novels kind of because it was my my destiny. I was, I was you know, scarred from life at age 10, and, I, and the only way to address <laughs> the, that damage is to write a zombie novel. And, there we go. So, so writing was basically cheaper than therapy, I take it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, ask any writer. Uh, every book you write is, is good for about four months, uh, six months of therapy. And, or if you're a slow writer, it's good for a year. 